Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Wednesday, September 22nd. I am First Selectman Jim Hayden and call this meeting to order at 631. Next order of business is item number two, which is public comment. Uh, do we have any public comment uh, at this point? Uh, the, uh, we do not, so we'll move on to correspondence, which is item three. And um, the, uh, there's information from the town attorney regarding ordinances um, and the incentive ordinance, which we'll talk about later on the new business, uh, uh, was attached to, well, was part of the email. And then the second um, piece uh, that was attached was uh, a moratorium on cannabis, but it was more a prohibition than it was uh, a moratorium. Uh, we actually have three op uh, options, well, actually two options. Uh, one option is um, that uh, since it's a land use uh, decision on property in town, the use of uh, property in town, that it can be a land use. Uh, and Derek, when he was here, our attorney, did mention that. Uh, or it could be a, we could do a moratorium uh, uh, and just uh, have time for the town to consider it uh, further. Um, and uh, and then do an ordinance at this point since it's a uh, land use. I think planning zone uh, planning zoning should take the lead. So uh, well, in the new package that I uh, the additional package is, that I gave you uh, shows uh, something that planning and zoning is going to be looking at at their next meeting. And then, then you know we can. Uh, Let's see what planning and zoning does, uh, and then we can take it from there. Joe, look like you got a comment on your mind, on your tongue. Well, ultimately, it's land use. The moratorium seems more towards Board of Selectmen. Well, yeah, but if, if, if we can choose whether they, to have do a moratorium or not, or do right. an ordinance or not, and what I'm... Uh, suggesting since we had a sense of urgency in August because there could have been a uh, something brought that would uh, a, a referendum brought from the from townspeople if they wanted to to uh, have it on the ballot in November that urgency is gone because that timetable is now gone if planning and zoning were to consider it, they would be considering it from either a prohibition or somehow changing zoning regs so that it could be accommodated. Well, the zoning regs would be changed one way or the other to allow or not allow. But planning and zoning couldn't put in place a moratorium for a period. No, of time. we would only be the ones to do the moratorium. And you're right, it would be the function of the Board of Selectmen. I, and, um, you know, I'm not sure since their timing isn't needed anymore because of the, the uh, possibility that there could have been a, a referendum proposal from the townspeople. Since that's not there, it can't get on the ballot, the timetable's gone. I. Not sure that we really need a moratorium because then it can go through planning and zoning. But the next election coming up would be a year away, and it would kind of put a time frame on planning and zoning to somehow resolve it within the year, wouldn't it? Well, I'm, uh, I'm, there's not a municipal election in a year. I thought it was just an election. It's just, yeah, it's a, there is not a municipal election. Right, but it, I, I didn't recall it needing to be a municipal election. I thought it was an election. Oh, I see what you're talking about with the referendum. I, I wasn't, I, I missed the dot. I wasn't sure where you were going with that. Uh, right, so another, uh, you, there would be a, uh, um, you know, a state, uh, a state election. My understanding would be that if the, it, and it appears that the planning and zoning is going to have it on the next agenda, is that would be something that they would resolve. Uh, I would anticipate that something, you know, with due diligence and due process and, and feedback and everything, I would think that that's something that would be done, you know, 
I don't want to set a timetable for them, but if it was me, I'd say by the end of the year, there should be you know, feedback from residents and feedback from the planning and zoning and action taken. Okay. So if it appears that that doesn't happen, then we can at any time uh, do a, a, you know, do a, a, okay. a moratorium or an, well, it, we would do a moratorium, but we would go to town meeting on it. Just, so no one in the meantime, I mean, if somebody puts in an application, I guess my concern is similar to the medicinal marijuana facility. The whole conversation changed when there was an actual application as opposed to a situation where planning and zoning was just looking at the zoning regulations themselves. But I guess part of my concern is it would be nice to have, I guess I'm leaning a little bit more towards the moratorium because it would give us time to talk to the people who live in East Granby, get a sense of what everybody's looking for without the possibility of having someone with an application. And now, you know, there's, people are going to have to maybe rush a little bit on their, their thinking process or thought process, but the moratorium would give us a certain amount of time that we feel we can perhaps have a town meeting or a public hearing or whatever to talk further about it without the added pressure of an actual application and something driving this. Yeah, the, uh, and I certainly understand your, your, your point. Uh, my my thoughts on it is that uh, first of all, we're not even sure when the state's actually going to have the mechanism in place to allow this. So it could be April or it could be you know later in the year um, of 2022. And um, you know, and, and frankly, uh, you know, whatever the, the licensing process is. Um, I would think that there's other opportunities for entrepreneurs than East Granby because of the volume of people that live here. And even though there is a lot of traffic that goes up and down the highway, uh, it can't beat the opportunity that you would have in a city of 50,000 or 60,000. Okay. We can keep a close eye on it. Okay. The um, August police slaughter, uh, there was a uh, uh, year to date, uh, there's 5,418 calls for, for service. Uh, in August alone, there were 701. Uh, there uh, were 10 accidents, 49 tickets written, uh, 33 medicals, uh, three citizen assist, one DUI, zero larcenies, zero domestics one missing person, zero burglaries, zero assaults, and there was one sexual assault. Um, and there was uh, one uh, case of what they label as suspicious intent. So the uh, were relatively quiet month in town. And the year date numbers are excellent. The burglary to the um, larceny four year to date, so they've been doing a very good job and the encouragement of people locking cars and all that seems to be working, so it's nice. Thank you. Uh, then moving to, uh, just uh, to give me an opportunity to, to tell the Board of Selectmen, but also to mention to you, our residents that the pandemic moratorium on utility service disconnections ends September 15th. So that was a week and a half ago. Uh, Eversource does have um, a, uh, programs that may help people with paying their electric or their heating bill. We did put it on social media. We'll put it on social media again to, uh, to let uh, folks know. Uh, but uh, when in doubt, call Eversource. Uh, and, uh, so uh, there's several ways to get help. Uh, one is 
uh, Operation Fuel, which is uh, uh, is uh, listed as 860-243-2345. There's the info way. Uh, there's the United Way info line, and that's the 211. Uh, and uh, you know the Public Utilities Regulatory Authority. Uh, is the information is there, but the one that would probably be the most effective to start with would be the 800 number for uh, Eversource, uh, and that would be 800-286-2828. Again, we did have the information on social media, and we'll put it on again. And we'll put it on the town website. We've got some good news from the state of Connecticut, uh, DOT. They are going to upgrade the signal at the corner of Center Street and Route 20 by the post office. What they're going to do is they're going to uh, remove the nighttime flashing operation and in install a 360-degree stop bar detection cameras uh, and add a pedestrian countdown timer at the locations. Uh, so um, it'll be like some of the areas that you see in town where there's a tall pole at the, on the signal with a camera and that uh, instead of the old system where it was a magnetic strip, um, the, the new camera is more reliable and, uh, uh, and they have statistics showing that it's a safer intersection. So um, it um, is something that's going to happen uh, and is funded by uh, DOT but it will be completed in 2023. So they, um, they expect, uh, they expect in 2023 to be able to get it finished. Uh, there's a shared service project with Sunsbury that we're doing regarding the disposal of leaves at the uh, Sunsbury landfill. Sunsbury stores and composts its uh, residents' leaves. Uh, we pay for the, we have them up at the RCCR leaves there, and then we, uh, we pay to have them removed. Um, Sunsbury staff rotates the leaves uh, at their facility, and they make the compost available to its residents. Um, we're going to enter a shared service agreement with uh, Sunsbury. Uh, where they will accept the municipally collected leaves from East Granby at no cost. DPW, our DPW would be able to take a portion of the compost of leaves for their own use, which they will. Uh, we also will provide a portion of the labor needed to, uh, to move the leaves. That's a couple hours of labor a couple times a year, uh, maybe eight hours of labor a couple times a year. Um, and uh, this would go for a, a trial period of one year. We also uh, are looking to uh, create a bin that we would have for the composted leaves uh, for our residents to use uh, in addition to DPW. So this is something that uh, it costs us a couple thousand dollars a year to uh, dispose of at this point, and we're going to be able to um, save that money and uh, provide uh, some additional compost for our residents. Uh, correspondence, uh, it's additional information that I gave you. It's uh, the general government June and August financials. Um, we uh, returned uh, a little bit more than $84,000. Uh, that's before the audit is finished, but that's what we anticipate it to be, uh, which is about $10,000 higher than my original projection uh, back in, in uh, May, June. Uh, overall, for the, for the current year, we're um, looking, uh, we're a little bit over, uh, we're trending a little higher than budget. Um, when you look at the, what the spend should be, it's about 15% of our total budget, and we're at 21% uh, or 6% uh, over our budget. But it's deceptive uh, because there are several annual and semi-annual bills that we pay um, in the beginning of the year. Uh, for example, 2.5% uh, of the 6% uh, difference is in the annual property casualty insurance payment. 
uh, we'll get about a half a percent worth of reimbursement on the summer camp line for the park and rec, and uh, it's about a two and a half percent uh, of the um, of the six percent is um, advanced payments to the library and the health district. So overall, we're slightly higher. I don't see a problem at this point, and we will continue to monitor, watch it, and maintain our uh, our processes that allow us to uh, provide services for the town and return money at the end of the year. We also have the tax collector information uh, for uh, FY21, uh, and it was a, uh, so June 30th, it was a 99.05% increase, I, I'm sorry, 99.05% collection rate. Uh, the previous year, it was 99.24, so it was still in the 99% range, which is excellent, but it was a little lower than, than the previous year. Uh, you don't know what the effect of COVID is or those things, but overall, I mean, anytime you're at 99%, that's an outstanding job by the uh, by the tax office. In FY22, uh, the uh, currently uh, we had a uh, collection rate uh, through the end of August of 60.64%. Last year it was 60.12%. So this year's collection rate. Um, trend is a half a percentage point ahead of where it was this time last year. So again, my thanks to the tax clerk and the tax collector's office. Also, what I included was uh, the year-end pre-audit from the treasurer uh, and um, the, that um, no real surprise, no surprise it's on it. That's something that the Board of Finance reviews every uh, every month, as, as I do. Um, and uh, the uh, total uh, non-education uh, revenue was uh, down um, to budget uh, because of OPM approving uh, some projects and not approving others that we applied for uh, for municipal grants and aid. So that went to the um, the transportation or the the uh, power fund. I was trying to remember what that stands for. <laughs> so, so anyways, uh, so that that went uh, towards uh, road maintenance. Uh, so uh, when you follow the numbers through, though, you'll see that. The other, there's other departments and other areas that uh, picked up the slack, and we actually uh, had 100% of our budget, uh, and uh, it was actually 100.6, so it was almost 101% of the budget. So, and uh, good job by the residents of East Granby and by all the town uh, departments that uh, helped to make this happen. And then I have July in there, along with August in there for your edification. Um, nothing too exciting early on in, at this point. And nothing that was brought to the Board of Finance attention last night at the meeting. Jim, there were two other pages, and they both say June 2021 at the top. Do those that's kind of why you have, uh, that's one of the reasons why you had a, a, a new package uh, of additional correspondence because it should have been July, uh, June rather, and August, and it was June and June. Uh, so I had the, uh, the narrative that I had given to the Board of Finance, so I just gave you the correct copy. You can dispose of those two pages. They don't have any relevance at this point. I, I thought it was an exercise because I kept trying to figure out what was different about them, and they happened to be the sheets with all the figures and numbers on it. So I'm, I feel relieved that you're saying there wasn't any difference. It was not a test. <laughs> <laughs> and the last piece of correspondence is um, it's something that I, uh, I got from New Prague today, uh, and there's having, uh, there, there's going to be a um, webinar tomorrow that I am going to attend, 
and would certainly extend the invitation to either of you if you wanted to uh, attend it. Either also, it's a webinar, so it's uh, it's virtual, uh, and it's youth car theft in Connecticut: trends and steps to improve public safety. Uh, and um, the, uh, there will be welcome remarks. Uh, Krog is in Yukon are, are behind this. There'll be a moderator from the Connecticut Mirror, Kevin Keelan Lyons, and then there'll be a presentation from uh, Ken Barone, who's Yukon's project manager institute for, uh, for municipal and regional policy. And then there'll be uh, a state representative, a police chief, uh, another state representative and an associate professor, University of New Haven, Michael Lawler, but he also was in public safety in the state of Connecticut uh, for many years. Uh, so Vernon Riddick, chief of police of, the, of West Hartford, Tony Walker, state representative of the New Haven district, Chris, uh, Craig Fishbein, uh, state rep of Cheshire and Wallingford, Michael Lawler, uh, Lawler um, who's uh, currently with the University of New Haven. It's Thursday, uh, tomorrow, 23rd, from noontime to 1.30. It'll be interesting to see the perspective um, of, uh, and also what information they can give us as uh, and I think eventually it's got to go up to the legislature, and the legislature's got to, to do some things. Uh, the uh, Department of, uh, of Judicial, uh, uh, the state uh, judicial department, um, did uh, uh, offer some assistance in the last month where it's easier for police now to get information. So they're not accepting, uh, they're not arresting somebody or stopping them from what they're doing, and they're a juvenile, and they then they're not aware that there's four other incidents somewhere else. So that information is being tightened up and made available. So uh, I think that's a good thing, but I think there's more that needs to be done. So anyways, I'm going to attend that meeting and see what they've got. And the next order of business is the minutes for September 8th. Is there a motion to accept the minutes? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Thank you. I'll second that. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. We're into 5A, which is old business. Uh, uh, school, 5A is school town building committee report. Uh, the uh, part, uh, part of the project is to uh, remediate the scour over at the Floyville Bridge. That's the erosion of the river bank or, uh, or the brook bank. And it's, uh, it's something that needs to be done. It's not a critical issue, but it's something that we, uh, we need to take care of before it becomes a critical issue. Um, so we thought we were going to be able to get it done this year. Uh, there was a, a, some regulations that we needed, uh, some approvals that we needed to get from the state and the uh, feds. It has taken us a little longer to get that than we thought. Um, they did do the muscle test last week where they go through and they remove some mussels from the riverbed to get an inventory but and also if it is something that's on the endangered list or not. We haven't received the results back, but we anticipate that 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 won't be a problem. But uh, that will mean sometime next year is when the scholar project will happen because there won't be enough time to get everything all set. And also August is always when you try to do these things because it's always dry. Well, not this August. <laughs> it was unbelievable. So, so anyways, that's where we're at there. Um, Newgate drainage is being finished up, and then the pavement will happen uh, sometime uh, probably uh, by the middle to late October. It'll be 100% done. Um, and the uh, air conditioning project uh, over uh, at Algrove, you don't necessarily need the air conditioning the last couple of days. But the days that we did need it, it uh, worked really well. But a side effect of that, which is another really good thing, is with the, um, the ductless units, it will maintain the temperature at 70 degrees if that's what it's set. So if it requires air conditioning, it will cool the room to 70. But if 
it has some heat pump characteristics so that if uh, it's uh, if it's below 70, it'll pull it up to 70. So instead of having, we'll be able to have the heat go on, but we, uh, the normal heating process go on, but we may not have to turn it on as quick, as early. So it should be, it, it's an efficient system. There's a total net cost increase because you've got units that you didn't have before, and electricity that you didn't have before uh, that you're using, but overall it's uh, energy efficient and uh, it will help us uh, with our heat consumption. Sound good? Jim, who paves the roads? The um, town of East Granby uh, prepares the roads, uh, the DOT, uh, the DPW. Uh, we use the state bid list and we use Colossal. Um, we uh, have saved ourselves a ton of money over the years. We don't use an outside vendor for the doing the drainage, uh, with the exception of Newgate, which was uh, pretty sophisticated uh, work that needed to be done. But we do we change the catch basins out. But the actual paving is done uh, by Colosso here in town, and we get a uh, uh, we we actually get a little bit of rate than the VIP bid list. Okay. okay the. Uh, Economic development uh, report. I put in the 917 report uh, for you. Um, you know, there's. Uh, we know that there'll be uh, some workshops on Lot 44 in Seymour to hear uh, neighborhood concerns regarding uh, whether it should be uh, continue as residential. Uh, it's uh, the Lot 44 is owned by Griffin Land or whatever their name is uh, at this point. I uh, and um, lot 44 is, is owned by Griffin. Griffin owns a lot of land uh, in Windsor and has developed a lot of uh, things, uh, distribution centers and commercial uh, activity. So they're looking to, uh, to see if they could have a commercial application. It's currently uh, zoned uh, residential. And, um, and so um, planning and zoning is going to I'll host some workshops uh, to get neighborhood feedback and understand what the community would like to do regarding Lot 44. Um, East Grammy Meadows, we've talked about before, uh, it's a planned 47 unit planned unit uh, development off of East Street, and the approvals are there. So uh, it's late to start things now, so I would imagine uh, that it would be something that uh, the developer would look to do. In, the spring of next year, but that's a surmise on my part. It's not anything that he's told us, but he's indicated that he wants to get going with this. Back off of shared services is tabled. Jim, if we can, oh, uh, sure. any update on the village center study? The um, RFP has not been vetted as of yet. Gary is starting to work on the RFP. Okay. And just one other point, I mentioned at an earlier meeting the possibility of um, getting together with uh, Patrick McMahon and, and or uh, Chris uh, Kervick. I didn't know if that was something that was under consideration by the Economic Development Commission or anything like that. I was just going to kind of combine that into with the Village Center uh, study. Yeah, my only concern was it may give us some thoughts about the Village Center study ahead of time. Um, some things that they may have learned when they put together their study, and it may also be uh, of assistance in, uh, if Gary's preparing the RFP and helping him with that. Okay, well, uh, it's, uh, there, it's not going to happen for their September meeting, but we'll get it on the agenda for the October meeting. Next order of business is 5D, which is a long-term uh, recovery committee report. Um, there's uh, an addition that I gave you that is a summary of, of uh, by the chair of the long-term uh, recovery committee, uh, but uh, I gave you uh, the discussion that we had, we being the um, park and rec uh, director, senior service director, social service director, and myself, 
and um, we uh, had a conversation with the president of, uh, of CHR uh, and also with the senior vice president for advancement of CHR who specialized in, uh, in behavioral health and they work extensively with children and family care and they coordinate uh, with addiction services. Um, and we currently uh, indirectly uh, use them now because they, uh, we got a grant uh, in shared service uh, through subfield where um, we have CHR provides uh, a support to the East Grimby Police uh, on uh, anything that would, uh, would require some expertise on uh, behavioral health. Uh, as cases come up, uh, so the uh, so we already are familiar with them, uh, and uh, some of the one-time CHR projects because we don't want to do something that could cause us to have a surprise in the operating budget down the road. Or if we do that, we do that with our eyes wide open. Uh, so, anyways, uh, some projects that would be available from CHR would be mental health or drug abuse services uh, to students. They're actually looking, uh, you know, in larger towns to put satellite offices in the schools, uh, but we can certainly have that conversation. As a matter of fact, what they're doing is they're going to give us a proposal uh, of some of the services that they can provide. Um, we uh, you could look to extend the CHR program. It's going to go one more year. Uh, we'd be able to, uh, to go uh, two or three years past that, depending on the timing, if we use the ARP funds for that. Uh, also, they, uh, they can provide trauma programs for COVID trauma, uh, sexual trauma, or staff training, or train the trainer sort of thing. The, uh, the folks, uh, our directors, uh, expressed interest in um, a minimal charge to resident therapist program held once a week or once a month, uh, ongo uh, ongoing trauma counseling for seniors that could be paid for by the insurance or the town could step in with the grant uh, if, um, if there, there was folks without any insurance. We'd have to look at the sustainability of that. Uh, but it's something that uh, our, our directors see a pretty significant need in town for. Um, and our park and rec, um, uh, we you know, currently with youth services, uh, we do get counseling. We share that service with Granby, um, but there uh, could be more services that CHR could do for kids, you know, especially with perhaps in-home services that would be available. Uh, I asked our, our directors, I said, you've got three wishes, what would they be? They said, um, one, counselor therapist available on a regular basis, two, continue the police CHR program after the grant, three, group therapy piece for the families that is local and easy to access. Um, so uh, you know, I, I thought that was great feedback uh, as we start to get into programming for ARPA funds, uh, I think they've given us some things to, to look at and work on and get, like I said, we're asking CHR for, for a proposal. Our uh, chair, uh, who happens to be Joe Doreen, uh, of the long-term care, uh, I'm sorry, long-term recovery committee, uh, also uh, gave a report that I put in uh, and uh, he's uh, reached out to social services director and senior services director and park and rec, uh, and talked to them about unmet needs, uh, and they told him what they told me, which is adult mental health, uh, including addiction. Uh, with my, at my meeting, they were looking at uh, also for school-aged children. Um, and uh, we did meet with CHR. Uh, and uh, we'll have uh, continue those discussions and do an action plan uh, to see what we can do to help with mental health issues caused by COVID isolation and anxiety. Um, and Joe mentions in his report that uh, we're discussing the use of ARPA funds uh, and what the best way to use the funds are. Uh, and uh, he also mentions that senior services are ramping up uh, their activities. Um, and uh, they're not at pre-pandemic levels, but they're getting there. And uh, people, uh, are the, the folks, our directors are telling uh, the 
long-term uh, recovery committee that people are still a little anxious uh, at the senior level, even going out uh, to to large large activities. Uh, but you know, 95 percent of them are. are um, 95% of them are vaccine, vaccinated, if not a little bit higher percent. But the the problem is, is you know the Delta variant, uh, and also uh, depending on which vaccine you got, uh, if it's Moderna, it's a 92% uh, efficacy rate. So built in, there would be people that could still get it. Uh, the experience has been that whatever, uh, if someone is vaccinated, has been vaccinated and gets the uh, variant, that it's uh, mild and uh, it's uh, you know it's not as harmful as the, with quotation marks as the first, uh, the original uh, COVID uh, would have been. Um, only because of the vaccine. If you're not vaccinated, then uh, uh, the Delta variant has been pretty problematic for people. So um, uh, Joe also um, was soliciting his LTRC members to identify any needs that aren't being addressed. Joe, I stole your thunder by reading your report. Is there anything else that you want to? You did a very good job, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Uh, then the American Rescue Plan protocols, which we uh, uh, talked about at our last meeting, the consensus was to bring them to the Board of Finance, which I did. Um, and the uh, uh, you know it, it, the memo uh, has what the funding amounts are, when we're going to receive the, the funding, the two tranches. <coughs> Also, uh, what items are eligible, uh, and they're in broad categories of supporting public health response, addressing negative impact, economic impacts, of which I contacted East Windsor, who did a grant program for their small businesses. So we'll talk about that at our next meeting, but there's some really good information that I got from them. They're also, investment in water and sewer, broadband infrastructure for underserved uh, households and businesses and replace loss of revenue. Uh, so the uh, also uh, listed what the ineligible items are. Um, the uh, proposed policies and protocols would be um, the ARPA fund approval and dispersal would be the responsibility of the Board of Selectmen, similar to Board of Education grants. Expenditures would be subject to complying with uh, previously mentioned support. Uh, for those five categories that I mentioned. Uh, a separate account has already been set up by the treasurer so to, to track the funds. Um, the uh, treasurer and the first selectman would give a monthly report of the balance of the funds and the expenditures, uh, giving those to the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance, again, on a monthly basis. Um, similar to capital projects, the ARPA projects uh, would, under $5,000 would be an administrative approval. Over $5,000 would require Board of Selectmen approval. Um, the, uh, also, the, uh, well, I'll, I'll do this other one first. We should look at hiring a grant manager. Uh, everybody's doing, looking to do that. There's not a lot of qualified people around at this point. Um, and uh, we would also, hopefully, through that process, uh, create a uh, eligibility eligibility criteria for grants and a potential ranking system, ranking system for ideas. At a previous meeting, I shared with you some of the ideas that we were thinking about that we got from department heads of the long-term uh, recovery commission, committee. Um, and our ARPA funds are to be used to cover costs incurred beginning March 3rd of 2021. So um, we can, uh, we can have this as an agenda item at our next meeting and approve uh, these uh, policies and protocols, or since it's not the first time that you've seen that and we've, we've list, talked about it before, we could have, uh, you could consider a motion uh, to approve as presented. What's the pleasure? I would make the motion to approve as presented. I just had one question. You presented this to the Board of Finance last evening.
did they have any comments that would change anything in there? Uh, no. Uh, I don't recall a lot of comments. And I, I would make that motion. Even, do you have a preference? You'll second? Sure. Yep. Any further discussion? So we'll approve that as presented. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Also, uh, something that we've done a lot of work on, which was the approved five-year capital plan I presented to the Board of Finance last night on a separate issue. Uh, they did approve the three projects that we brought before them uh, for the fall, um, and uh, we expect to combine that with some um, ordinance changes. Uh, one that you've seen already, which is incentives, uh, and the other that you haven't seen uh, is basically like a housekeeping one where it would clean up um, the hiring of outside consultants for planning and zoning, which would be paid for by the applicant. Uh, so you'll see that at the, at the next meeting. Um, the different, there's one difference in the plan that was presented uh, last night to what we talked about, and that was um, uh, Building maintenance brought to me uh, a proposal to replace the senior community center fire alarm. Uh, roughly, it would cost us about uh, $20,000 uh, to uh, to replace with a uh, with an addressable system that you know is the, the loudspeaker. Um, it's about $20,000. With uh, what I suggested to the board of finance is that. With the Board of Selectmen approval, we would add that to um, fiscal year 27, um, and that would mean the total for that year would go from 40, 465,000 for, to 485,000. So that that was you know that that was a, a different uh, an additional item to what we discussed, um, and uh, with the consensus of the Board of Selectmen, I would continue to go forward with that. Um, and it, what it does is it gets us on the, it gets us on the cycle. So um, there were lots of questions uh, on the, uh, the five-year plan, but specifically on, uh, also on the capital items. Uh, you'll notice that we don't have a capital uh, item uh, town meeting on the agenda yet because it's a little early because we're looking to get the approvals of the boards and then get the ordinances uh, put to bed and then uh, sometime uh, in mid-November go to town meeting on the three capital items and on the two to three ordinance items. Any questions on the capital plan? <coughs> and the wildlife crossing is tabled, but we'll, we'll start to dust that off at a future meeting. At least before the snow flies so that the ground's not frozen so we can put a couple signs up. Uh, next order of business is 6A, new business. Uh, and uh, periodically, it, it, it probably was a, a shock to you, Eden, because you, we usually don't have uh, refunds uh, mm -hmm. with the amount that it is. It's not a shock from Joe because a couple times in the past um, we've, we've gone through this. And what it is is the uh, enterprise. Uh, so anyways, the total is $53,378 that the tax clerk has proposed to uh, given to us, most of which was signed off by the assessor also. Um, and $43,504 of that is uh, uh, from Enterprise, uh, is a, would be a refund to Enterprise uh, cars, uh, car rental. Um, the corporation is called EAN, and they, uh, they uh, in the past, and at this time, has proved to the assessor and the tax clerk that the vehicle that they pay tax on uh, for the whole year wasn't in East Granby for the whole year. Uh, so that would entitle them to a refund. So um, it's been uh, vetted by the assessor and by the tax clerk, and is uh, part of the 53,378 on refunds. 
uh, just to give you a flavor of the other refunds, $3,600 uh, uh, for a uh, overpayment uh, of real estate tax, um, $262, uh, which was the uh, overpayment on a uh, vehicle. Um, same thing with $116, uh, $116 uh, $55 uh, real estate, $4,151. Uh, again, it was uh, it, it was an overpayment. Sometimes escrow payments and clear, uh, closing checks uh, pass in the night. Uh, and then uh, the value of a vehicle was uh, reduced uh, because they moved out of town and they didn't have the, the vehicle in town uh, for the entire year. Uh, that's $700. There's $9.37, $11.99, and then the, the Kahuna, uh, $43,504. The last time that occurred, there was a conversation about looking into ways to prevent that from happening, but um, I, I guess when they write out a check for an additional $43,000, that's not incentive enough to avoid doing it, so I guess we're going to live with that. Yeah, their system, and, and I had that conversation with the assessor and I had that conversation with the tax clerk about how can we work so that we don't have these things, and part of it is their, their system that they have where they pay the checks, you know, it's a huge corporation. They pay the bill and then they go back and, and they reconcile it. So when they receive the bill in July, they pay it uh, and they reconcile it over the course of the year. And then they, they uh, actually they have a company that does it for them. Uh, and then they apply for a refund. So barring them changing their procedure, um, every so often we're gonna have a blip. So do you need a motion to approve? Yes, sir. I'll make a motion to approve those refunds. I'll second the motion. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 The um, draft ordinance that you see is just for conversation. It's a work in progress, uh, the draft ordinance on the incentive program. Um, we're we're going to get feedback from the EDC after their meeting next week. Um, and then uh, we'll, uh, you know, at our meeting on October 13th, uh, we can discuss it and either put it to bed or put it to bed on the October 27th meeting, which would hit the timeline of a town meeting in November. Um, the, uh, I did discuss uh, uh, this with the Board of uh, Finance last night to, uh, you know, to make them aware of, of the process and that uh, we were considering that with town legislative action. Um, and uh, uh, so uh, we'll get feedback from EDC. Uh, we've also, uh, you, it's not on your copy, I don't think. Did I give you a red line copy? Yeah. Okay, so that, that I received that today, a red line copy. So there's some changes that were made on it. The big change uh, that, that I've got the town attorney doing research on is something I uh, asked them for, is the incentive uh, ordinance as presented would still require a town meeting every time you gave the incentive. And the whole idea is to give an incentive uh, to businesses that they know what it is and they understand it and they don't have to, they, they can count on it. They have the, the certainty of it. So uh, he's going to confirm that it doesn't conflict with any state statutes and I would expect that we would not have that in there. So that would come out. And then there was some cursory changes that Gary made on just on some typos or uh, you know, it, there was still some things about manufacturing in, the, in there, and it's less manufacturing and more, um, you know, general uh, commercial activity. Uh, the, uh, it would not replace the BDZ, uh, the Bradley Development Zone. It would not replace it, nor would it allow uh, you to use both. You'd have to use one or the other. Um, not everybody in town would benefit from the Bradley Development Zone. 
Uh, so um, uh, they, they, they are not geographically where they would qualify for it or their businesses and something. So this provides a one-two punch. People could do Bradley Development Zone, of which from a town perspective, we get 50% of uh, abatement uh, uh, from 50% uh, of what we've abated, which is 100% uh, for five years to the to the um, zone that uh, qualified. We would we receive when they have funding 50% of that money back. Um, so you know there is an advantage with the BDZ, but also uh, it's what it's not one size fits all. It's not something that that, that uh, would help some of our other businesses or incent uh, folks to come in and, and put some uh, some dollars, uh, where, some money where their, their mouth is. So, so anyways, um, I don't think we, at this point, uh, I certainly will answer any questions that you have. I don't think we need to go through it line by line right now because the version we're going to have at our next meeting is going to be a different version. But certainly any questions you have. Yeah. Or comments. In reading through it, some of these areas didn't, wasn't sure that it's practical. If I'm understanding Adam correctly when he prepared this, this was something that occurred relatively early in the cycle when there were conversations and the businesses were making a decision and that these incentives would get them to look at us and hopefully choose us. That process that's in here, you mentioned the town meeting, but this calls for them getting all of the permitting, all of the approvals in addition to the meeting. I mean, it, it seems like that could be a lengthy process. Um, and if another town even if they didn't have incentives but could expedite things, it may. Yeah, and that's one of the things that, that we're looking at, Joe, is to simplify a little bit. What, so what page and what line are you looking at? So I can make sure that we look at it. On, it's section F, application procedures. So it could be five, no, I'm sorry, it's just F. And under I'm sorry, what is it? F. Application procedures. Yeah, got it. In reading that, um, they pretty much need to go through everything before they're approved. Right. They they've got to get they've got to go through planning and zoning like normal. And and, and then um, once that happens, and if they're in the criteria in planning and zoning, you could see that. As, as, as we will. So it's EDC uh, for preliminary review, and then the Board of Selectmen gets involved in it. Uh, in, 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 let's see, paragraph one, two, three, four. So paragraph four uh, would strike uh, all of the language uh, at, towards the end of subject to the affirmative vote of the Board of Finance and the town meeting, which agreement accompanied by the report will be referred to the Board of Finance for its review. If the Board of Finance approves the financial terms of the agreement, the BOS shall place uh, the agreement on the agenda for the next town meeting, what well, would be a Board of Selectmen meeting. But the, uh, so some of that is taken out. So you're concerned about it being too complicated? My concern is that there's quite a bit that they need to do to find out if they qualify and the time frame involved in that may be a detriment to them coming here. Um, when we discussed this, I wasn't sure what the time frame was going to be, but I think we need to take a look at how long this process could take and make sure we've looked at everything we can do to make the process as short as possible. I, I guess I guess I'm not as concerned. A, I want the process to be short, uh, and I want it to be expedient and easy to use. Uh, and by the way, a lot of this was uh, the town attorney it wasn't Adam. Right. And my concern was that what the town attorney put together may not be the way that Adam thought it was going. Right, and Adam is is reviewing this now and is going to make a presentation next week with his comments to the EDC. Okay. And then the EDC will 
pass it on to us. Okay. So, fine. so there's, you know, there, we're we're still at the beginning, uh, but the, um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm not as worried about the time frame because it, it is pretty finite. You know, I mean, if you're, uh, you know, X amount of square feet or X amount of dollars worth of project. Uh, you're going to get the approval. So, I, I, you know, staff could indicate to them that it's it's a formality as long as they're meeting, they're checking all the boxes. Fine. I think we're on the same page. I just wanted to make sure that I was, I'd let you know that I was concerned about the time frame in this. Also, I, I in reading it again, and it may have always been this way, the property has to be vacant for at least a year. Well, that's that. That's for that part of the incentive. That's for, you know, the. That's for uh, what do we call that? The commercial, the vacant. It's under general requirements, section E. Yeah, but the but I mean that's. I, I guess I just. Because we're looking at commercial lease vacancy abatement, and then separate from that would be commercial construction abatement. So your worry, so your concern is about the the uh, commercial lease vacancy. Yeah, I, I was just questioning. You know, would at least a year? I mean, if somebody was to rent a space that had just become available, um, I, I guess what difference does it make to us if this could be an incentive to get them to come here and take that space, versus saying, well, no, it doesn't qualify because it hasn't been a year. You need to look at these buildings. <laughs> We're trying to, well, I mean, but, but practically, we're trying to give a, a, an additional tool to the Agreed. owner of the property to fill his long vacant buildings. And right. there's, and there's, right now, there's probably three buildings that qualify for that. So it's not a large, you know, it's not a large amount of buildings at this point. But we're also trying to build tax revenue, and it just seemed like I, I didn't quite understand. Well, hold that thought, and, and, and then when we get into our you know, additional discussion on this, we can we can you know hash it out. But let's let's see what comes out of EDC. Sure. Okay. I didn't know if you wanted the comments to so that they would have the ability to discuss it as well. But I'll I'll wait. I'll certainly have no problem if you wanted to. Give me either you or Eden. Give me an email, uh, and I'll I'll give it to the EDC. Um, I guess uh, uh, what I'm looking for is let's have the folks that you know. And, and you're a small. You're both small businessmen. I was a small businessman myself, and I was in large businesses. You know, we certainly have our opinions on what we we want to see happen because we think that it would be very helpful to the town. Um, but let's see what the professionals can do. Fine. And, and then we'll take it from there. This is, you know, our fingerprints can be all over this. So. And they should. Mm -hmm. They should. Okay. Okay. Anything, any other questions or comments? Okay. Next order of business is executive session. Well, I'm sorry, it's public comment. Okay, uh, and hearing none, uh, the next order of business will be executive session to discuss negotiations for the property off Floydville Road and personnel matters. I would um, expect this to be a relatively short session. There will be no votes taken, and, and uh, we will immediately, once we exit uh, executive session, we will adjourn. So is there a, a motion to go into executive session to discuss negotiation for the property off Floydville Road and personnel matters? I'll make a motion to go into executive session. I'll second that. And uh, at 7.30. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. We will move uh, to a, uh, a room that doesn't have cameras since it is executive session, although it was very thoughtful of Natalie to yes. shut the doors for us. I didn't have the heart to tell her she didn't need to do it. So. <laughs> okay, so we're uh, going into uh, executive session at 7.30. Uh, no votes will be taken and we'll... we'll